Hey everybody, welcome to another video, and today I'm with Steve, and his daughter's dryer decided that it doesn't want to work. Um, she put the clothes in, hit the start button, and nothing happens. So we're going to take a look at it, diagnose it, go through the steps, and hopefully get this repaired pretty quick. So why don't we start with, um, why don't you let me know what, what were the couple things that you started with? So with power on? Yep. Uh... Check the door switch. Okay. Make sure the door switch is functioning. You can hear that click. Okay. And also see that the light comes on and off. So it does two things. Power is getting into the dryer. Okay. And the door switch is functioning. Okay, good. So next step now is to go under the hood and see what else might be causing it to not function. Right. All right. So let's start with, uh, now in this model, looks like we got a rear panel with several screws. So we're going to pop those off, obviously after removing power which we've already done because you can see it's moved out of the way. So let's get those screws out. All right, so now that we have the back off, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Uh, we did look at a wiring diagram of the dryer and we'll see that there are several elements here that are protecting from bad things happening. So Steve, why don't we walk through what are some of the devices that we have here? Okay. So down here, we have the heating element. This is where the connectors of the heating element are, right okay. here. Uh, right above that is uh, the, uh, the high limit sensor, the, the high limit thermostat switch. Okay. Uh, up here is a thermal cutoff thermostat. Okay, and now that one's non-resettable, so if that Just, goes, it has to be replaced. Correct. Okay. Uh, down here, we have the uh, cycling thermostat. Uh, which uh, controls operating temperature. And right here is the thermal fuse, which is also a one-time use device. Okay. And I think if I remember correctly in the diagram, that cycling thermostat has kind of two modes. So that would be tied into your high temp, low temp operation. Correct. Um, that thermal fuse that we're looking at right here actually ties into the motor. So if that opens, the motor won't start. The motor has a switch as well that ties into the heating element. So if the motor's not running, the heating element can't run. Correct. So we've got one, two, three. We've got four devices that will control whether or not the heating element gets power. Plus the door switch. Plus the door switch because the door switch prevents the motor from starting, which prevents that other switch from actuating. Right. Okay. So... So we'll go through and start testing these one at a time. Okay. We always want to make sure that one of the... Uh, connections is removed yep. when we're going to run continuity. We're using a, uh, a digital voltmeter. Yep. And I have it set to continuity mode. Okay. So, so when we hear the buzz, we know we're... Okay. So we've got good there. So we know that guy's not open. And down here. And this one's kind of interesting because the cutoff is actually directly connected to the heating element so we're going to do a few tests here to check it so this is right now checking the uh is that the high the power high the high temp yep okay so that's good and let's come down here and see if we get continuity on the heater The dryer video though sometimes those things like to grab on <laughs> so we've got continuity now the, the the heating element will have some small resistance but right it, it's showing it's got continuity so we're good there yeah that's something if that were open that might be uh if your dryer is running but not getting hot not heating the clothes that's a good spot to check right, we'll check the cycling okay thermostat the red wires is the heater power so this is the one we really have to focus on, and that's good. Okay. The purple wires here have to do with high-low temperature. We're not really worried about that immediately. Okay. And then the last is where the fuse. Let me get over here. Let's see. And now oh. I think we found our culprit. Yep. Okay. So that would explain why we have a no start condition because that won't let the motor start. All right, and that is a one time, so that needs to be replaced. 
All right, so the thermal fuse is looks like it's blown. Yeah. What do we think could cause that? Because it's, it's one thing to fix the problem, but if we don't have the root cause, it could blow again. So if we take a look at airflow, this is the heaters down here. Yep. So this is where the heat starts. This is open here. So okay. this is the air inlet side. For drawing air from there. Okay. Drawing air from here. It's going to come up here and enter the dryer here. Okay. This is the lint vent is at the top. Okay. This is where the lint vent is. And the vent coming out of the dryer down here okay. with the blower motor behind here. Okay. So this housing, if we look at it, this is the exhaust. We're going out our dryer vent. Yep. I'm assuming that this thermal fuse is protecting against buildup of high temperature uh, due at to lint exit. at the exit and probably okay. due to lint blockage. So most likely this had a blockage in the vent, which is causing a backup of uh, the airflow is not flowing well, everything's getting hot, and that was the last ditch effort. It protects the dryer from catching fire. Right. Okay. So we definitely want to check and clean out the dryer vent, which since we're touching this, we're going to clean it anyway, but right. That may have been our root cause. Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we'll start by replacing that fuse, and we'll clean up the dryer duct. The thermal fuse on this particular model dryer fastens with one screw. Okay. Pretty simple device. Yeah. Right. So it looks like this guy got a little sloppy probably from cycling it. So we'll just give it a little very gentle, just a very gentle pinch so that those loops grab onto the spade lugs a little bit tighter. A little better now? A little better. Good. So the other side of this now is to clean out the duct. And you can see here we've got the flaps. So why don't we pop these flaps off? We'll take a look inside. These here usually are flexible. They've got very thin plastic tabs on them. So be careful not to break them. See those tabs, the little pegs, you don't wanna break those off. So just flex them gently, and just pop them out. And yep, you can see we are pretty clogged. So let's get all that lint out of there. We'll start by cleaning up the outer part of the duct. Steve's cleaning kit has flexible extensions and can be spun with a drill. It has an adapter to connect a vacuum cleaner, which makes lint removal that much easier. Per the instructions, use the drill in a gentle in and out motion to gently dislodge the lint from the duct. The vacuum then pulls the free lint out of the duct with almost no mess. We're going to clean the remaining few feet from the inside, so we'll get the brush installed. Now, one thing that would probably be handy here is, because this has a hose clamp on it, we'll tighten up the hose clamp to help secure the adapter, and it makes one less thing to have to worry about holding. Because chances are this brush, when it spins, is gonna wanna try and spin the whole duct. So we're gonna need to hold that, and this will save us from having to hold the duct and the adapter at the same time. One thing worth noting is that this foil type dryer duct is no longer recommended for use and should be replaced. We'll save that for another time. See my dryer duct replacement video for more details. So before we get all this back together, let's clean out the rest of the dryer as best we can. So this, in this particular model, here's the lint trap. So we'll pull that out. And now we'll get the brush in there and we'll try to just dislodge some of that stuff that's in there. Hold the vacuum adapter to the dryer's exhaust port. With the vacuum running, use the long brush to gently dislodge any lint in the filter duct. If your kit comes with a thin vacuum adapter, then you can use this to suck out the lint as well. While the back cover is off, we'll use the vacuum to remove some of the lint that is accumulated inside the dryer. I also use my phone camera as a periscope to give the belt and idler a quick inspection. These look good, so we don't see a need to replace them. 
Since the dryer has been moved, take a moment to clean the area of any dust and lint accumulation. All right, we're ready to put the back cover back on. Let's get this lined up and a few screws started to hold it in place. Yep. Ready to put the dryer duct back on. And the clamp is loosened up from what we tightened it around that adapter before. Mm -hmm. And also orient the clamp so that we can actually access the screw to secure it. So I'm going to have it facing straight up so that it's easy to get to. Okay. All right, with it back in place. Get it plugged back in. That always helps. Beautiful. I'm gonna let it warm up. Make sure everything is yep. functioning. I'll take a walk outside and we'll check the duct. And you can see we got some dust that blew out, so we'll get that out of there. Well, we got good airflow which is definitely a good sign. All right, let's take a look and see how much lint and dust we actually got out. Now we cleaned this before we started this process. That's how much lint came out of that duct work. That's probably what the problem was. There was so much in there, it was blocking airflow and it led to that over temp condition which tripped the safety fuse. So, Problem's been fixed, dryer's working, and from now on, every one to two years, that duct is gonna get cleaned out. All right, well, that wraps it up for this video. Steve, thanks so much for the opportunity to do another video. Uh, hopefully people have learned uh, just another diagnostic tool they can use if their uh, closed dryer stops working, but also to reinforce that importance of cleaning those ducts because that could have been a fire, but thankfully the safety circuit kicked in and it did sacrifice itself to protect um, the, uh, the dryer in the house. So that's good. Um, and so hopefully... Uh, many, many years of drying ahead. Yes. <laughs> so. Thanks for coming over and uh, we'll you know, enlighten and educate your viewers and this is good. Great. So thank you so much. And, uh, You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, as always, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And until the next video, see you later.